Come on, 1.2. Use all those cylinders. <laughs> Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a beautiful day in Lincolnshire. And it's just got better because this is the brand new Suzuki Swift. Brand new for 2024. And there are lots of exciting things I need to talk to you about this car today. The team at Drayton Motors in Boston, which is a Suzuki and KGM, formerly Sanyong garage, have given me this to test drive today and have a look around. As you know, I had a Suzuki Swift. It was a 2009 car and it was fantastic. But this, well, it's all new. Every single body panel on the car looks different to its predecessor. New moldings gives it this stylish yet mean look. And underneath the bonnet is a brand new engine which is this, the small but mighty three-cylinder 1.2-litre petrol engine. But it also has hybrid rechargeability. And the engine bay isn't that small that you can't work on your own car if necessary. And doesn't this mean smiley face grille really change the whole look of the front of this car? The one we're looking at today is top of the range. It's just under £20,000 on the road new. And you get these beautiful diamond cut alloys. Keyless entry is as standard, as is the engine stop-start technology. And here you can see parking assist, lane assist and collision assist. This one today that I'm testing out is the one with the five-speed manual gearbox. However, it is also available in a fully automatic too. Although a small car, the interior does not feel cramped. In fact, it's quite a nice place to be. As somebody who's six foot four, there's plenty of height for me and it doesn't feel cheap. The interior materials feel quality, but also it's not like you're driving a spaceship. You've got just the right level of mod cons to balance out the car is easy to drive. You don't have to press buttons to change gear. There's no buttons here that you can knock when you're trying to put your cup in the cup holder. If you want to charge something up, the flaps are here. You don't need to pull a lever to put it into reverse, but you've got heated seats and a nine inch touchscreen navigation media system. But that doesn't control your temperature. You get too hot, you turn it down. You get too cold, you turn it up. There's no fiddling with this screen, which I love. The lights aren't controlled by the screen. They're controlled by a stalk, as it should be. And as a driver, I can just get in it and go. There's none of this messing about. I don't need to move stuff. There's not electronic switches that move my seat back and forward every time I get in. I've got automatic window adjusters. I can take a call on my Bluetooth, trip computer, cruise control. It's going to tell me the speed of the road I'm on. But if I want to turn all that off, I can. If I want to just get in and drive, I can. I'm a big guy, you know? Six foot four. There's three inches between my head and the roof. I'm a wide guy as well, right? These bolsters, they're comfy. They're not digging into my sides. There's no seat massager. It's the only downside so far. The dash pod and clocks look great. They are not electronic, i.e. it's not a computer. They are manual. You can see what you're doing. And your onboard computer is quite a nice thing to play with. You've got your FM radio on, here. The, we can the listen to Jeremy Vine on BBC chips. Radio uh, no, 2. No. Uh, we can go back to navigation if we want to on here. Uh, it's quite a responsive touchscreen too. Um, it's a nice thing, that. 
Your steering wheel has all your bits and pieces on here too, including changing of the volume up and down. You've got trip computer here, cruise control, speed limiter. You've got lane assist on and off here and you can answer your phone calls with your Bluetooth on here as well. And when you see a bright pink Fiat 500 in your rear view mirror and think, uh, well, just fold it in and you can see yourself. The in-car climate control system is foolproof. Fans, turn it up to high, turn it down to low. Low and recirc, everything you ever need there. I genuinely like this, it's tactile, and it's not confusing either. Heated seats though, keep your bum warm. You even get control of all the windows from your driver's seat. And if you've got kids in the back, lock them off. Before we take the car for a spin, however, I just wanted to show you the room in the back. Well, again, the seat is set to my driving position. And don't get me wrong, I'm cramped in the back here. But if a normal person that wasn't six foot four was driving, I'd have two or three inches here. And again, the roof height is good. Two adults in the back here, comfortable. Three children in the back here, easy. There's no pockets on the back of the seats though. Where are you gonna put your map? Now, Mrs. John Cooper might not like me saying this, but it's got a nice bum. It's certainly something I wouldn't mind being stuck behind in a traffic jam. And the rear um, camera there doesn't detract from the styling. It looks good from behind. The hybrid badge is nice. And the boot, well, plenty of space. Enough space for an inspector. Joking apart, for a lot of people, having space for the dogs is a big thing nowadays. And if you're like me, I don't like having them on the back seat. Crystal is not so sure about the boot of the Suzuki Swift yet, but I'm sure she would get used to it. But it's the sort of thing that you could probably get two dogs in here, two Labradors, a couple of inspectors. Um, take the parcel shelf out, of course, put the seats forward, put a cloth or a bed down and away you go. You're not going to be travelling far, but if you're taking them for walkies, does the job. Now I need to shake this off before I return it. A spare wheel, sadly, you do not get. However, there's space in there to put a spare wheel, which can be purchased as an optional extra. And with the seats folded flat, the parcel shelf just unclips. I can have a party in there. In fact, the boot is big enough for me. 20 stone. I wouldn't want to be riding in the back for long though. But if you can get a John in it, you can get your weekly shopping in it. And the conversion time from turning it from a van back into a people car is about 20 seconds. Ready for the school run. For a spin, we shall take it in just a moment's time, but just from going round the car, turning it into van mode, sticking the dog in it, it seems really well built and really well put together. It's a quality car and I'm putting it through its paces. This is the bit I've been waiting for. Now to take it for a test drive. I'll be interested to see the fuel economy. I'll be interested to see the ride, how it handles, the acceleration, the comfort, the quietness and the way it drives. So already that 1.2 litre engine feels pokey and quiet. The gear change is beautiful. The fact that I've got this manual gear lever is a driver's car, this one. Let's open her up. I'm in third, 40, 50, 55, 60, there's a bit of road noise from those tyres, but don't get me wrong, I'm on the back roads of Lincolnshire. These aren't pretty roads, I'm not on the motorway. The fact that it's got this automatic detection of speed limits is useful, especially if you're on a road that you don't know and you're unsure. Don't get me wrong, you should know the speed limit of the road that you're on, but in case you don't, 
handy to have. One thing I will say that I'm missing is an armrest. I'd like an armrest, please, Suzuki. The trim inside feels nice. It's got this leatherette embossed look. Yes, it's a bit scratchy plastic. What do you expect? You're not gonna get leather trim door cards, but it's functional. It does the job. Oh, the heated seat's still on. Oh! The indicator noise is that usual tick-tock, tick-tock that you hear from a modern car, but at least you can hear you've got your indicator on. It changes through the gears beautifully. It handles well, and actually the ride is not soft, but it's not firm. The suspension noise is very minimal. The aircon is doing a fantastic job. All the bing bongs and whistles and bells that you can hear, by the way, are lane assist, and that lane assist is picking up the white line. I'm trying to drive closer to the white line because, as I say, I'm on one of the back roads here in Lincolnshire. It is quite distracting, actually. I think I might turn it off. Uh, is that it off? Is that it on? I don't know. How do I turn it off? Let's give it some welly. Come on, 1.2. Use all those cylinders. <laughs> We're in fourth now, up to 60 miles an hour. And I don't want to go much faster than that. Oh, it corners well. All the steering is tight. It's not a car for driving at fast speeds like a lunatic. We're in third. We're in fourth. I'm comfortable there, but I can put it into fifth. Again, we're on these knocky old horrible back roads. It's fine, it's sound as a pound. There's a bit of wind noise from this window, which actually wasn't closed properly. The steering wheel feels nice. You've got a metallic-y coloured plastic trim at the bottom and this leather, I don't know, PU here at the top. It isn't leather, but it feels nice. It's a matte finish as well. Over time, will the skin oils from your hands turn that to a gloss? Yeah. So? We're at 50 miles an hour now, and the road noise is minimal. Yes, there is a bit of road noise, to be honest with you. It's coming in through this door as well. There's some wind noise and through the windscreen. But it is a windy day, and I've got quite a crosswind behind me. I am having to correct my steering with the big gusts of wind, but it's comfortable. I could sit here and drive to Essex if I wanted to without getting out the car. It's a lovely place to be, and I do suffer with lower back pain, and it's nice, there's no issues. These lumbars here are hugging me tightly in some Renaults I've driven, and even Mrs. John Coupland's Fiat 500. These side bolster supports are so firm, they dig into me, because I'm not a small guy, right? I'm not a svelte guy. Um, and they do dig in. The seats are lovely and comfortable, and the fact you've got heated seats. Well, I'm not turning it on on a day like today, but that is a nice little perk in the winter. Don't get me wrong, you've not got the massage function, so I can't sit here and have a shiatsu. But what do you expect for um, such a vehicle? That's a luxury item, right? At 40 miles an hour, sounds good at 30 miles an hour sounds good i haven't done any motorway driving with it and the honest answer is i'm not going to do any motorway driving with it on this review but we've taken it on lincolnshire's back roads and well if it can handle them motorways it will just mile munch it's a really nice car genuinely i'm not just saying that because the team at drayton motors have let me have a play with it is it something i'd buy for myself yeah I would if I was looking for a sensible commuter daily everyday brand new car I would consider the Suzuki Swift I genuinely would and actually up until today it wouldn't have been on my radar things I would have considered would not have included the brand new Suzuki Swift it looks good 
it's practical, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's economic. It's just a nice car. The lane assist, I don't like. It's annoying me, I would turn it off. The bing bongs that wah 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 wah, when I stray over a white line or stray close to a white line would probably get on my nerves long term. But I'm sure you can turn that off. I haven't worked out how to do it. Failing that, turn Jeremy Vine up louder. See, bing bonging. Why are you bing bonging at me now? I don't need you to bing bong at me. Stop bing bonging at me! Well, that's it then. It's time to take the car back to the dealership. I'm saddened about that because it has been a lovely thing and it's looked very good on the drive. It's nice, it's a good place to be and it's an economic drive, 59 miles to the gallon and it's good quality for what you pay. Genuinely, thanks to the team at Drayton Motors who have lent me the car to try. They haven't paid me for this, I haven't paid them for this. Sort of a collab, collaboration. Does that mean I'm an influencer now? <laughs> so, what did I think then to the brand new Suzuki Swift? Well, she looks great from behind. That reversing camera really is great, especially with that nine inch touch screen. It does look mean from the back. The boot, there's loads of space in there. Enough for two Labradors and all your shopping. The fact that it folds forward and you can get, I don't know, your tip run in there, what an absolute bonus. The fact that there's enough space in the back for two adults or three kids, excellent. The perfect small town car. Passenger side, it's a lovely place to be. I could genuinely be in this car as a passenger for five or six hours without being bored, without the necessity to have to move my feet and get out and go to a truck stop. The wheels are lovely on this model and the paint is fantastic. The windscreen it doesn't feel like your dash is too far away. It doesn't feel like you need to get a cab to the front grille. It's perfectly proportioned and then under the bonnet, that 1.2 litre brand new three cylinder engine. It's pokey, it's economical and it's quiet. Genuinely, I can't hear the engine noise when I'm stationary in traffic. This front grille, well, aside from it probably being a bit of a nuisance to clean, looks nice and mean, doesn't it? And the lighting, well, I didn't sadly get to try them at night, but these LED and Xenon lights really will do the trick. Power fold, wing mirrors, fantastic. You know how it is. You're gonna get them knocked and keyless entry, absolutely fantastic. 19 grand, what do you get for 19 grand in a brand new car nowadays? Well, a Suzuki Swift. Will the team at Drayton Motors let me keep it? No, absolutely they won't. And I'm sorry to say that I'm going to have to have a few more years worth of YouTube revenue before I can even come close to owning one of these. Probably even one of the diamond cut alloy wheels. However, I'm thankful that I managed to give this a test drive and take it for a spin. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. What did you reckon? Did you enjoy this sort of content? Let me know in the comments below. Are you a fan of the Suzuki Swift? Genuinely, this has surprised me, this one. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. There's gonna be plenty more new car reviews coming to the channel. I'm saddened to be taking this one back this afternoon. I'm shocked by how good it is. Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Goodbye. Goodbye, little Suzuki. It was blooming lovely. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.